the next chapter is باب قول الله تعالى إنك لا تهدي من أحببت الله guides whom he will and the verse verily you O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم guide not whom you like but Allah guides whom he wills and he knows best those who are the guided إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء وهو أعلم بالمهتدين this is a clear chapter, verse and hadith as we would see to refute those who worship the graves besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who believe in the prophets and the righteous people what is not supposed to be believed as they believe that they can bring benefit or push away harm and if this is the Prophet sallam, the one that had the most uh, uh, eagerness and uh, to, to guide his ummah and to have the goodness to them the Prophet sallam, himself والسلام, uh, has not the power to guide the people meaning changing their hearts otherwise he would have, have changed the heart of his uncle that he supported him and so on and we have to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that so that people would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in seeking guidance in that sense that he's the one that changes the hearts and he's the one that to worship alone and so on so this verse clearly says that إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي this is to the Prophet وسلم, that you do not guide who you love وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ we know that the Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him وَإِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي إِلَى صَلَاةِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ and you, O Prophet of Allah guide to the straight path so what does that mean? there's contradiction here? of course not the second verse means although the word tahdi comes in place that you are guidance for mankind to show them what is right and what is wrong Prophet Sallallahu what is his job? Ya Ya Rasulu Ballig Ma Unzi Alayka Mad Rabbik Wa Illam Tafal Fama Ballag Tari Salata O Messenger of Allah convey the message of Allah This is the message This is the job of the Messenger to convey the message not to change the hearts Conveying the message is a form of guidance to, to guide people to show them what is the truth and what is falsehood Then the one that would change the hearts and guide the heart to accept the truth it is not the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Otherwise, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And they knew the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And they were not guided Why? Because guidance is in the hands of Allah When people say, oh if we were at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We would have been in somewhere else We would have been so obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Who said that? When the there, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they were disbelievers. They were the hypocrites at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So how can a person say that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the most just? He created you now. That means you, our responsibility is to be obedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala now, and He's the most just Subhanahu wa Taala. The same way, definitely, no one have the same virtue as the companions radiAllahu anhum. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose them to accompany the Prophet ﷺ, but at the same time, they were faced with so much fitan and calamity that made people disbelieve or hypocrisy or whatever there is so the person has to witness the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as he mentioned the lessons to be learned from this verse to uh, refute those who claim that the awliya or the saints or the messengers can benefit or harm in that sense in which changing the hearts uh, and things of that nature also the hidayah and this is called hidayah to tawfiq the hidayah to be guided to the straight path is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Allah knows best to uh, state the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of al-ilm and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise why some are guided, why some are not guided right we should not indulge into this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise how can a person claim that he is wise and denying that unto the creator of the heavens and the earth he knows best subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows who deserves and who do not deserve so a person has to submit himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also shows that it's not permissible to have the hearts attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek guidance only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and the hadith that we mentioned some of it earlier uh, in the sahih Ibn uh, Musayyib an abihi قال لما حضرت أبا طالب الوفاة جاءه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعنده عبد الله بن أمية وأبو جه فقال له يا عم قل لا إله إلا الله كلمة أحاج لك بها عند الله فقال له 
أترغب عن ملة عبد مطلب فأعاد عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأعاد فكان آخر ما قال هو على ملة عبد مطلب وأبى أن يقول لا إله إلا الله فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لأستغفرن لك ما لم أنه عنه فأنزل الله عز وجل ما كان للنبي والذين آمنوا أن يستغفروا المشركين ولو كانوا أولي قربة وأنزل الله في أبي طالب إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء وهو أعلم بالمهتدين When death approached Abu Talib Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم came to him and found Abdullah ibn Umayyah and Abu Jahl the two heads of the disbelievers in his company the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said oh uncle say there is no one worthy of worship except Allah say la ilaha illallah a word which will enable me to plead for you with him to intercede for you for him meaning if he says la ilaha illallah the two of them said would you forsake the religion of your father Abdul Muttalib the Prophet ﷺ repeated the request and the two of them also repeated their question the final word of Abu Talib was about being on the religion of Abdul Muttalib meaning on kufr and he refused to say la ilaha illallah the Prophet ﷺ said but I shall continue to pray for your forgiveness as long as I am not prohibited to do so it was then that Allah the Almighty revealed the verse which means it is not proper for the Prophet and those who believe to ask Allah's forgiveness for the mushrikeen even though they be of kin Allah also revealed concerning Abu Talib verily you O Muhammad وسلم, guide not whom you like but Allah guides whom he wills and he knows best those who are the guided ones and this incident has many uh, benefit uh, in it of course in which uh, the Prophet وسلم, uh, which is the point of the chapter to prove that the guidance is only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abu Talib he knew the truth he knew the truth but uh, out of the uh, the pressure of the environment and the people would say that he embraced Islam out of fear or weakness or whatever there is he refused to say la ilaha illallah which also proves that a person can never enter the fold of Islam unless he believes in it with his heart and unless he says it with his tongue unless he's deaf for something else but if he doesn't say it with his tongue he is not into the fold of Islam so the ulama they say, mentioned some of the benefits here which is one of which uh, it's permissible to visit a sick disbeliever uh, why? It's hoping that he become a Muslim so it is not something that is forbidden the Prophet ﷺ did that for his uncle especially for those who are close in relationship but with the intention of uh, presenting Islam to them uh, being kind to them and uh, presenting Islam to them it also shows the uh, the danger of having bad friends and people that would influence the person in a bad way like those who were around Abu Talib at the time of death you know they made him die on the state of kufr as a result of this bad companionship and also uh, the meaning of la ilaha illallah and that is to leave the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the idols and the righteous and so on and so forth uh, because the disbelievers they knew the meaning of it Abu Jahl he knew the meaning of la ilaha illallah some of the Muslims today they do not know the meaning of la ilaha illallah Abu Jahl knew the meaning because Abu Jahl used to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created him and he provided for him but he would turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some acts of worship so he understood that la ilaha illallah means no one worthy of worship the word ilah means the one to be worshipped with full submission and perfect love this is the meaning of ilah that's why la ilaha illallah they understood it they don't worship these idols they don't turn to these images so they refuse to say la ilaha illallah and whoever says la ilaha illallah with certainty and knowledge and fulfilling the conditions of la ilaha illallah and dies in that state he will be among the people of Jannah either if he has sins he will be forgiven or he will be punished but then eventually he would enter Jannah also another benefit that he mentions here is that the deeds are by the ending of it right how the person ends his life this is what matters and that it's forbidden to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for disbelievers died in the state of disbelief uh, this is haram and uh, also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that guides again this is the point of the chapter and also it refutes those who say that Abu Talib died in the state of Islam again it's emotions right 
uh, they think that they love the Prophet Sallallahu they say that. This is a clear hadith as we heard, right? And the verses of the Quran was revealed. So how can a person then lie and say otherwise? Right, and, say, and some people say that you don't love the Prophet Sallallahu because when you say that his uncle uh, died in the state of Kufr. What can we do? This is not our decision. This is the revelation from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that we have to submit ourselves to. And also the danger of imitating the ways of the forefathers without clear evidence. And we should not think that since we are Muslims that means we're free from that. No. Still, the, it doesn't mean that our fathers were good people. That means that they are in the righteousness at all of its meanings. It doesn't mean that. right? So that means we have to have the clear way and the clear evidence that we follow the truth, the way of the Prophet And this is one of the main cause of deviation or disbelief to the human being, the issue of their forefathers. What is the most, and those who are working in the matters of da'wah, they would see that. People don't want to leave the way of their forefathers, especially if it's deep in their ancestors. If it's only the father that embraced or whatever embraced, it's easier. But it's when the forefathers are on one thing, and for him to change, this is something that is really difficult for him. And people say that clearly. I heard it more than one time. Say, I know that, that this is the truth, but I cannot change the religion of my forefathers. It sounds very ignorant when a person do that. That means he knows that he's going to go to the hellfire, uh, not to change the ways of his forefather. This is, is it only to the disbelievers? No. It is only f also for the believers, but with the perspective of not disbelief and belief, but in matters that are ignorant, a person innovating in the deen of Allah. Right? Making something that is not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And we would say, well, this is our fathers and our forefathers have been doing this. Is there an evidence that this is the true way to do things? Definitely not. Right? One of the evidences of what is right and what is wrong, Quran, Sunnah, consensus among the ulama, and nothing of it, the forefathers have been doing this. It's the ways of the disbelievers. This is the ways of the disbelievers. So each person... Definitely we respect the forefathers and those who are in Islam and everything, but it is valid from, uh, that they would fall into something that is wrong, right? So we have to make sure that our lineage to the Prophet ﷺ is very clear, that we follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And there are many things that the forefathers do wrong, even in matters of uh, raising. You know, we always uh, say our parents used to raise us in such a way. Who said that this is the right way? You know, is it true? Uh, the truth is what, yani it might be true, might be wrong, Allah A'lam. But the point is to always think that they were right in everything. This is not a, a, a correct statement. And the criteria to know what is right and what is wrong is the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet, the sayings of the ulama. This is how a person would know what is right and what is wrong.